Hey Josh, I just watched your Q&A video where you were providing the A to the Q. And I have a couple of questions for you, not for you to answer to me, just uh, to yourself. And uh, then some cautionary words of wisdom, perhaps. So I'm being slightly avuncular today. Or maybe, uh, maybe I'm being uxorial. I'll let you decide. Anyway, you're just now getting into the MRM. And <clears throat> before you go any further with it and get any older, uh, sit down and pull out a sheet of paper and ask yourself, why am I getting in this, into this movement? What are my explicit goals? And just as importantly as doing that, write down by what metric will you be able to determine when you have reached your goals. What I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to do here is uh, help give you a way to immunize yourself or provide some kind of inoculation against getting caught up in a cult. I'm not saying the MRM is a cult for people who might get butt hurt. By the way, if you are defensive about that, uh, you need to think about why that might be. Okay, <clears throat> I'll explain that later. One of the reasons I don't take labels is because it is very easy once you take a label to start filtering everything that you think on particular topics through the lens of uh, whatever goes along with that label. You will start to advert to what the group thinks, start to advert to what the group believes, to what the ideology requires, rather than remembering why it is you got into the, the whole ordeal in the first place. So about every six months, take out that sheet of paper you wrote where you started out writing stuff down and ask yourself, what are my goals today? What are my explicit goals today? And then compare them against what they were. To the extent there's any distinction, there's any discrepancy between the one and the other, pay attention to how it is you explain to yourself how it was you were able to move from the one position to the other position. If you think about feminism, um, feminism is an ideology that is looking for a problem to happen. Whereas a hundred years ago, there were problems that really existed that needed to be solved. And after they uh, agitated for years and years and got everything that they wanted, they realized something. Shit. We have all this money, we have all these resources, we have all this power, all these kinds of things. Fuck, we're out of boogeyman. I know. We'll just invent a few and then go after that. It never stops. One of the problems of talking with feminists, among many, is it's very difficult to them to, uh, to get them to paint a picture of what it is, the end state of their system, what, what this, the world would look like if they got everything that they wanted. And the reason that it's difficult for them to do that is because they don't think about it. The reason they don't think about it is because that isn't really their goal. Um, so since they're not able to tell you what it would look like if they got everything they wanted, that also that has a further implication. Uh, they won't be able to recognize when they've gotten what it is that they set out to do. They're blind to that. And so they're just going to keep on going on and on and on, consistent with the uh, whatever the, uh, the particular dogmas of the day happen to be that are bundled in the label feminism. And I want you to be aware of that, particularly because you're, you're young and when you're getting into this movement with the people who are much more worldly than you might be, sophisticated and whatnot. Rem by the way, remember the people who rise to the top of organizations are generally the silver-tongued devils. Um, these are the people who are good at persuading people to believe things. That's, that's how they get people to trust them in the first place. So uh, bear that in mind and also bear in mind it is extremely easy to fool yourself and it's extremely easy to be fooled. And there's a third issue. People, it's very easy to fall into a habit where you want to be fooled by someone you respect. Uh, you are a willing participant in the lie that you're being told. And I'm not saying the MRM is, li MRM is lying to you. This is general. So um, pay attention to those things. And also, notice when someone says something bad about the MRM, how you respond to it. And I don't mean like someone you've been arguing with for a while and you're just really annoyed with them, that particular person. I mean in general. If you, if you look at how a feminist operates or any person who has, uh, who's wed to an ideology operates, to attack any part of the ideology is to attack that person individually in a very deep, meaningful kind of way where that becomes a significant emotional event for them. And that's because they have taken ownership of that ideology and they're no longer in a position where they can easily div divorce themselves from that ideology. So because that is true, they won't know when, uh, uh, when to jump ship. They won't know when it's time to bail out, when they've gotten what it is they wanted and all these other things, and it's time to move on with their lives. They won't be able to recognize it when that moment arises. And unless you go out of your way to work very hard for that, uh, that kind of awareness of your interaction with, a, uh, with some kind of group, it is so easy to fall into that. And I just want to help uh, give you some words of wisdom there to help you avoid doing that. All right. Have a great day.